be talking about the physics of waves. Now, if we didn't have waves, you wouldn't be able to hear my voice right now. That's something in here. Now, what you be hearing is sound waves. What you be seeing with your eyes, that's light waves, light waves. Okay, so there's two different types of waves, transverse waves and longitudinal waves. And the difference is, is where the particles vibrate. So in transverse waves, which are kind of like that, the particles are vibrating perpendicular to the motion of the wave, whereas in a longitudinal wave, sort of like that, they're vibrating in a parallel direction or along the direction of a wave. <laughs> so you all be hearing a famous story. You say an opera singer will be singing an incredibly high note. And then everybody in the audience will be wearing glasses. Shut up! That's not quite right, eh? Now there are some physics behind that that you might not have thought about. So say we all be drinking a little bit, we have in our wine glasses. <laughs> It's a physics way. Now, every glass has its resonant frequency. You might be thinking, hey, do it. How do I find it, that resonant frequency? Hmm? Ready? That would be the glass's resonant frequency. Now, if you be singing a note at that resonant frequency, at an incredibly high volume, that glass Shatter like that. And ain't that something, gang? <laughs> now, I want you to check your neighbor and see why that might be happening. Mm -hmm. Check your neighbor. So, what happens at the structural intensity? Who think they be knowing why that happened? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The glass will try to vibrate faster and faster than being able to move. Say crack. Now, why would it be vibrating though? Because if the tone matches the resonant, the resonant frequency. Exactly, got it right on the head. Now, you be imparting energy, since waves are a propagation of energy through space. Indeed. You be imparting energy onto this glass at the specific frequency at which the glass will break because that weakens the bonds. Now, I'm no opera singer. I cannot shatter this glass. But if I sing at the right resonant frequency, if you're quiet for just a moment after, you can hear the glass vibrate a little, and you can hear it kind of echo me. We're going to try this out. You gotta get it right on pitch. Uh, uh. <laughs> Not every day you be singing to glass and then sing back. Oh. Um, you can add the troughs and the peaks, litter, 
like in a linear algebraic fashion. So when they're out of phase, there will be destructive interference. So over here, we have a plate of water. And if you take some water and drop it onto the plate, you'll see that the waves go out and then they come back and effectively cancel each other out. You may be saying, hmm, HC, how come? Now, those waves bouncing out. They're all the way around. And if you were in a normal pond, that would be fine. They just go out forever. But since they have such a small, tiny surface, now that's when the real magic would be happening with this. Those waves be bouncing out in all directions, but they'd be hitting the walls. And the walls, when the waves hit the wall, that is a inelastic. <laughs> inelastic. It bounces right back with the same force. That wave, boom, hit the wall, but he keep right on going, go right backwards. You back it up, you say, I don't like that wall. Oh. And the other wave, on the other side of the plate, do that too. So when they both hit the wall and they bounce back, they destructively interfere, cancel out to z, begins with a z. Yeah. Z. And then, that's the right gang. Z. And now, I'm sure you guys noticed my boombox. Hey, 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 you wouldn't be listening to a couple of tunes, you know? All the good stuff. Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> but, you may be wondering what you'd be doing. With these speakers, I mean, wow. Interference, that's the cool stuff. So, before we get to that, we're gonna go a little explain how speakers work and how they create the waves. Because a speaker works just like a pendulum in some way to create a wave. We see our speaker right here. Yeah, we turn off the lights. We see our speaker diagram right here. This line here is the front of the speaker. Right here. Back here, we've got what's called the voice coil. It's an electromagnetic coil which works with pulsating currents. And that generates a tone which pushes the cone back and forth. This pushing motion of the cone back and forth is what pushes the air. Now, what kind of a wave might that be making? We saw with our slinky the two types of waves. What kind of wave if it's pushing back and forth? Longitudinal. Hey, hey, hey. Right. Want to show them a little again, the longitudinal? Yeah? Because it's pushing back and forth. So the waves be pushing the air back and forth. The air don't actually be moving, though. That would be wind. And every time you hear, you don't hear wind. So it's pushing the air back and forth. But the air stays in roughly the same spot when waves are traveling. So that's how these speakers be working. Now, normally, the speakers are paired up in the same phase. So this speaker, when this one puts out a trough, this one will put out a trough. When this one puts out a crest, hey, crest on the other one. Who'd have guessed it? But, so, if these two speakers are now out of phase, and this speaker puts out a trough, that's a dip in the wave, right? What would this speaker be putting out? Yes. Crest. A crest. That's right. And if this one puts out a trough, the other one? Crest. Right. And so they're putting out equal and opposite waves. Uh, so, what might you think would be happening with those two equal and opposite waves? Like we've got up here. We see when this one is a crest, the other one is a trough. And when they go together, smoosh them together, we get a nice flat line. Now, what do you think a flat line is sounding like? Hmm? Starts with zip. That's right. I hear it over here. Zip. Silence. Nothing. There's no waves, no sound. You hear nothing. So, this demonstration is hands on, it's ears on. So, in a little bit, once I've set it up and got something playing, 
I'm going to ask if you come down and walk through the room a little bit. And there will be a certain spot right in front of here where you will hear nothing. Even though other places in the room you'll hear the tone just the same. So you'll stand right in front and say, Gee, Paul, you turned that off for a second? I say, no, that B starts with an F, gang. Physics! <laughs> All right. Now, the reason we'd be doing this tone is because it's a thousand kilohertz, or uh, a thousand hertz, one kilohertz, which is right in the range of good human hearing. And if I were to do an actual song, there's too many frequencies that get muddled up within that for you to actually hear silence. So that's why we do this. It gets a little irritating. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. We're not in a perfect environment because in a perfect environment, we'd have no walls around us reflecting the sound back. So we'd just have the two speakers in our room. Are you aware that you're saying that you're going to do Something else you could have tried would be let the person stay anywhere they want, <laughs> tweak your frequency. Since it depends on their frequency, so that was 1000 hertz, 1000 waves per second. Since it depends on the frequency of the wave, I'm going to show you guys, just while you're sitting in your seats, how the sound will change for you guys as you're sitting there. Because the waves will be different, so they'll be moving around in a different way. So I'm going to scrub up and down through a couple different frequencies. This is 1000 again. Now if I move it down to about 750, you might notice some different quiet spots, yeah? Oh, maybe. <laughs> We're all a little quiet today. <laughs> but you'd be noticing it's a little louder for me now. It's a little quieter for me now. Different frequency. So we're actually going to stop it there because our ears might be hurting a little bit. Yeah, my ear drums are right. And now, the lab you've all been waiting for, the tastiest of them all. Okay, so the way we built this is with skewers and then a few two gummy bears on each side and we put a string of tape down the middle and then we obviously stuck it on like that so this uh model can basically show a way so if you ready okay so if you tap it gently you can see the wave going through is that physics <laughs> yeah. So then in this model, it's important to note that both sides are always, perma they're permanently out of phase. So if one one of the gummy bears goes up, this side has to go down. So uh, because, so if this side is going up, that side's going down, it means in the middle, it shows that there's no movement in the wave. If we would have a straight line right along here, you can see, if you look right down the middle, there's no movement whatsoever right in the middle of the tape. Yeah. And if we were to take out some of the, so if, like this part down had no skewers at all and you still, uh, or no gummy, bear, gummy bears actually, the skewers were so, still there and you tapped it, you would see that over here it's slower and as soon as it gets to the part where the gummy bears are off, the, way, the wave would travel faster. But also because of momentum, mm -hmm. because Excellent. it takes a greater force for those gummy bears to be moved because there's greater inertia. Do you want to try Let's have, yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yes. So, what change would happen if you took that, like, and just moved it further, like, made the entire thing more tall? Say that one more time. Like, if you pulled it and made it more, like, the made the string or the. The tape string. If you pull it, decreasing the slack. So, pull. Ooh, wow. Chris wow. motion. Yeah. We can see it go back as well. Yeah, so with, without the slack, it's easier to see the motion on the mm -hmm. reflection. And then... Oh, so cool. Now. Can we make a standing point? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Right. Right. Uh, like, vibrations simultaneous, maybe one here. That's right
What kind of wave would we be making right now? Hmm? Check your neighbor. Starts to. Come up here and give it a flick if you like. The scientific name for the flick is give it a pulse. Can I give it a tap? Give it a pulse. Okay. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Go. So where would the nodes and antinodes be? Gondar? Somewhere around here? All right, physics types, we've been holding our Q&A session. Can I be the first you understand something? If you want to know how something be working, ask away. Okay, so are you familiar with like gaming monitors? Yes. Yeah, so you know how they have different yeah. hertz options, like 60 no, hertz, 140 hertz, yeah. 240 hertz, and how it makes the picture more smooth. Can you explain how that works? So, for the monitor, that is called the refresh rate, and that is with light, so that's light waves. And that's not quite waves per se, it's just because remember, Hertz is just a unit of uh, a period of frequency over time. So frequency does not necessarily mean like a, have a sound frequency of some sort. Frequency just means literally how often something occurs, how frequent it is. So for a monitor, the Hertz you see on it is denoting how quickly the screen, screen, the screen is refreshing its image. As my fingers be moving up and down, you kind of see a mishmash, flesh-colored blur. But that would be like 60 hertz. But on a 120 hertz monitor, you see my hand more clearly, like images like this. So you'd see my fingers every time. Thank you, Ben. What um, what frequency is needed to blow the speakers? So that's an interesting question you'd be asking. There is no frequency that you blow on speakers, but it's the energy and amplitude contained in a wave. So actually, where is it? So actually, you see the answer about that. Our normal wave, we look like this, right? We have the normal sine wave. You play that through your speakers. You play that through your speakers, that'd be just fine. But say you'd be listening to some really rocking tunes, you know, that good stuff, baby. And you blast that, you turn it up to 12, not even 11. Skip right over that. You'd be blasting it way up. But it's still the same frequency. It's going all the way off the board. You can't even see how high that's going. And it's still the same frequency, right? Because if this is one second, you've got one cycle per second, that would be one hertz, right? So it's still the same frequency, but since it's just got so much more amplitude, it's got so much more energy and kick to it that it's going to really force the speakers to try to move as much as they can, and they just can't. They don't have enough room to move back and forth, vibrate that air, and they'll just blow themselves up. So I know you want to focus on the more sound like waves in general. You said light waves also behave the same way. So can like constructive and constructive interference with light? How would that work? Well, light waves are more of a special case because light waves work in a dual nature, <gasps> both as a wave and as an electron. So they do they do have some different behaviors that normal uh, sound waves do not have, and since they're in electromagnetic. Mm -hmm. I see a hand in the back. So this is kind of related to um, the question that Ryan asked um, in the beginning. Would the same effect that you were saying, how the, if the energy and amp amplitude was changed, would that cause like the eardrums to rupture if the like sound was played 
like high energy like amplitude. The way that you're, you are able Boom to box. hear for the brain oh, is that there's vibrations, so that's the source of the waves, and then part, like parts of your ear, such as the eardrum and then um, the cochlea, and then like the three bones and everything, <clears> think of those vibrations, and they use neural impulses and like a potential difference to transmit those signals to your brain. So if there's a sensory overload, it could severely damage the organs. Especially the ear. Yeah. And then also the way that the neurons work, it also involves physics as well with electricity, because there's a potential difference down the neuron, and then there's voltage gated channels and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs>